Hey game devs, this is Dan with You Contribute Games, and in this video, we're going to take a look at adding a damage and heal flash overlay to your game. When I say we're going to add a damage flash and a heal flash into our game, what I'm talking about is this awesome visual that you're seeing right now on screen that's kind of flashing around the edges of the screen. It's giving the, the player just an indication that they've been damaged, they've been healed, that something's happened to their character. And this is an effect that's really kind of become popular in a lot of your first person shooter games. Um, but you could use this same technique in a ton of different ways, not just in a first person shooter. So how do we accomplish this? Well, the first thing you're going to need to do is obviously have this image overlay that you want to display on screen. So you can get creative in Photoshop, come up with all kinds of different ideas. Uh, we've simply taken some blood splatter brushes and some star brushes. And with a, an image that had a transparent background, we've gone in and we've kind of colored around the edges real heavy in the corners and then kind of fading that in and spreading out our brush strokes as we got closer to the center so that we really gave a clear visual to the center of the screen where the player is primarily looking, and then just given this you know darker image around their peripheral around the edge of the screen. All right, so we first are going to create those images and then import those into our project and put them into our scene. All right, then we want to add them to our HUD canvas so that we can see them on screen, but they don't need to be seen all the time. So let's go ahead and adjust the transparency or the alpha level of those images down to zero. So they're there when we need them, but right now they're not in our way and you can't see them, right? Next, we're gonna set the damage flash color, the heal flash color, as well as our damage flash speed and heal flash speed. Now for these values, we've gone ahead and set up a red and a yellow color and we've set their initial transparency or their alpha level to 127 and we've set a flash speed of three. Now this felt right and looked right for our health manager demo, but there's not a real exact science to this that I can provide you because your game's going to be different and you're going to want a different look and feel to how that fades out in your game. Right. So this is something that you're probably going to have to play test and try out before you get it exactly how you want it to match the feel of the game you're making. So all the thingamaboppers and what to do hickeys within our scene hierarchy have been set up and are ready to go. Now we can dive right in to our code and looking at our damaged flash function. There's only a couple of concepts we need to understand in order to understand how this works. We can kind of get into the weeds with some of this, but we're going to keep it high level. So first things first, damage flash is called every frame iteration because it's called within our update function, which is called every frame iteration. So every frame of our game, damaged flash is going to be called. And it's going to say if damaged, meaning if damaged is true and we set damage to true in the take damage function. So when we take damage, we set damage to true, indicating that the next frame, if damaged, is going to be true. And we're going to set the damage image dot color equal to the damage flash color, meaning our damaged image dot color we set when we added that image to the to the scene, we adjusted the alpha to zero or the transparency to zero so it couldn't be seen. When we change that to the damage flash color, our damage flash color is a visible color. For the damage flash we have, it's set to a red with an alpha or transparency level of 127 within our, our demo, right? So now that's visible on the screen, and we're going to fall out of this if statement. Before the damage flash function is done, though, we're going to change that damaged value to false. So unless take damage is called between now and the next frame, the next time damage flash gets called, that if damaged is going to be false, and we're going to fall into that else statement, which is going to set the damage image dot color value to a new color using the color dot lerp function. And lerp is short for linear 
interpolation, which is a whole nother video unto itself. So we're not going to go real deep into that. Just know that for the purpose of fading this out, we are passing the color.lerp function, our damage image dot color value, color dot clear, and then we're taking our damage flash speed, multiplying it by time dot delta time, which is going to give us a new color in between our damage image dot color and color dot clear. So ultimately it's going to give us a new alpha level lower than the current alpha level, right? Every frame. And because we're passing it that damaged image dot color value, we're going to gradually fade this out. It's going to start off real steep. And then as it gets lighter and lighter and lighter, that value is going to be much more lower, much more lower. Yeah, I said it. And it's going to slowly fade at that point. So it'll, it'll fade really fast and then it'll kind of slow down and just hang around for a second. Yeah. You know, just cause it doesn't want to leave just yet, but it kind of gives you this real quick and then gradual fade out. So a nice curved fade out and that's it. That's what happens. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. And our heel flash is going to be pretty much the same thing. Same story, names have been changed to protect the identities of the victims. Um, the damaged is now the healing. Damage image is now heal image. Damage flash color is now heal flash color. And damage flash speed is now the heal flash speed. Outside of that, it's going to work in the same manner. And you know that healing Boolean value is set to true when heal is called. So that's going to set off this, the next frame iteration for everybody following along and typing this up into your own health manager. I'm going to put these two functions one after the other up on screen for just a little bit so that you have an opportunity to pause the video and type this up yourself into your own health manager. But if you'd like a copy of the health manager demo asset pack, including this script and all of the assets in that click right here, click these links, Click down in the description and get your own copy. So you made it to the end. Well, I want to say thank you because I know this was one of the longer videos in our health manager tutorial series, but I wanted to not just show you the code that I'm typing into this, but also give you a little information on how it works and how it's all tied together so that when you want to do similar functionality in your own games, you don't just know what to type, but you know why you're typing it, right? So if you like the content and you want to see more of it, click that subscribe button, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, head over to youcontributegames.com. And most importantly, uh, give us some feedback, leave us a comment down below, shoot us an email, ycg at youcontributegames.com. We'd love to hear from you.